All right, my friends, welcome to episode 331 of Prof and Dev Play Games. This is the Horizon Forbidden West spoiler cast. So if you have not played the game and do not want it spoiled, I regret to inform you this is probably not the podcast for you. Um, we will talk about Elden Ring later, though, because I got some questions. Okay. Um, but I am at Prof Plays Games. I'm Larry the Professor. Over there is Anthony the Dev at Summer Speak. How is life? How you doing, man? Uh, good. Another sloth Sunday. At my nice. house, which was good. Um, but yeah, getting, as we talked shortly before, getting uh, anxious about my first day back in the office tomorrow, which will be the only day this entire week that I'm in the office uh, and probably yeah. be the only day that I go in for a couple weeks. <laughs> but there's a hurdle to get over your mind over of being like, oh, I'm totally. going to do this. Um, mm -hmm. well, but I, man, I, I'm going to sit there and I'm just going to basically probably get my computer up to speed that I haven't touched in two years. <laughs> yeah, all the updates and everything. Although you have like <laughs> IT there, right? Who like does that stuff? Yeah, right there, there was yeah. like the 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 one of the owners. He made sure that he like through all of this. He was always coming in because he needed someone in the office to like reset servers. Uh, he had a like sometimes the VPN would die, um, so we'd have to go in and like reset the the because we had a physical VPN. Um, server in our server room he had to reset that there's random power outages that have happened mm. weirdly in seattle like this neighborhood of seattle that we're in and so uh, you have to go in and reset everything um mm -hmm. so yeah we've had general it going in and i'm sure my computer's mostly been on a lot of that time i think oh just been running just like uh, are you remoting in kind of thing no or, i uh, i did i did remote into my computer for Probably about a month, and then just did everything I needed to do to switch it to my, used to use my home computer all the time, because my home computer is just better than my work computer yeah. at, at that point, because um, right. I, I was uh, very good at um, getting CPUs and a GPU all at the right time before they you all went out of stock. Well, I yeah. did. It was like, I bought all that stuff March, I, was, I probably got it in April of 2020 is when I bought all this stuff before things had gone to hell. Um, things had gone to hell, but the supply chains hadn't gone to hell yet with the, uh, right. So I was able to get like a GPU at retail price. <laughs> so in stock, just retail, um, and CPUs without issues. So yeah, my home computer is much better than my work computer at this point. Um, so that's going to be fun to deal with. Yeah, I, I remoted in like probably like I probably remoted in like 10 times just for different things on our server that I can't get anywhere else. But otherwise, everything's on, on my computer. Um, yeah. Plus, I don't have I mean, mine's like documents, <laughs> you know, yeah, mine's no. like word documents. It's nothing, nothing major. Mine's compiling code. Lots and yeah. lots of, of code. Um, and but, it helps to have a lot of cores for that. My home computer has like twice the amount of cores and threads that my work computer does. Nice. Yeah, that reminds me that I've upgraded my entire fucking PC during this time. I, I think I got the, I, you know, time's a flat circle now, but I got my CPU and um, got my 3060 during this time. Yeah. And all yeah. my motherboard RAM. I think I did the whole thing during this time back. It was hard because some, some things I couldn't get, actually. Yeah. Some, I'm some a CPU I wanted, I couldn't get. Yeah. Um, it's been a challenge. So we'll see. I honestly think tomorrow will likely just be me sitting there. <laughs> running updates at least half the day is going to be just dealing with that computer. Um, yeah. But I figure that needs to happen at least somewhat. And then we'll see how often I actually feel like going in, um, which yeah, obviously the... is not going to be a not a lot, but so just I, dip your toe in the water. Yeah, it would be nice. Oh, there's good food. I can at least get some really good takeout. That does sound good. Yeah. <sighs> well, there is a world in our far flung future where there is no more takeout no. and it is after the Pharaoh plague destroys everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are talking tonight about horizon forbidden West. Cause we have both beat it. You beat it two nights ago. I think I did. Um, and then I beat it tonight. Um, I spent some time last night, probably three hours, three and a half hours last night. And then another hour and a half this afternoon. And then another half an hour tonight. Yeah. And I finally got through it. The uh, yeah. So why don't we top level kind of, you know, start with how we felt about the game and then kind of dig into details. Um, why don't you start? What do you think? Sure. Overall, um, overall um, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think it's a 
marked improvement on the first game, and the first game wasn't bad. So, said it before, it's improved in pretty much all ways. Uh, I especially liked the fact that there was a lot of... I mean, we've been using the shorthand term for companions in this game. Um, right, yep. Where the first game didn't really have... Like, you had some major side characters, but they weren't fleshed out like this, or... Yep felt like they were so involved in your story um, they were, that Aloy was going through. Right. And that felt really good, and that they were very involved with all with many of the major events of the of the story. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I thought it was present the story was presented better than the first game. And generally it just felt like every little piece just added added to it. Um Overall. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And now getting to the end of it, I look forward to the next game. Yeah, and we'll dig into that because I got some questions. <laughs> um, for me, overall game, I mean, miles above Horizon Zero Dawn for me. I, if I were to rank this one score wise, it'd be like a nine, I think. Yeah, that's about um, right. Yeah, so the open world I think is really um, interesting. Like, there's just so many. I just kept happening upon things while I was trying to kind of get through the last probably two or three main or four, three or four main quests. Um, and I ran into like the flooded swamp with the Tanakh um, mm-hmm. side quest that I thought was really cool, and I stopped and did that. Um, I always found myself running into really interesting things, and you know the views. Obviously, if that's if nothing else, story wise was happening, the views were great. Um, the characters are super fleshed out there. I love having companions where there's like in the base, you know, it just felt very mass effecty to me. Mm-hmm. Um, coming back after every mission, and like running through the fucking extensive dialogue. Like there would be, it was last night. <laughs> I, it was like an hour of just yeah. going through everyone's dialogue in the base. <laughs> I was yep. like super enjoying it. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm not beating this game tonight. Cause I'm just talking to everybody. Um, which made the ending so interesting because after you do the big final fight, it's like three minutes <laughs> of talking and then it's done. I was like, wow, that's interesting considering it's such a talky game. Um, yeah. I, I loved it. I, I loved it so much. I thought the ending was, um, endings are hard. I think endings yeah. are never as good as the journey. I really enjoyed the silence thing at the end. I had a feeling he was going to um, turn around basically like he was um you know spoiler cast here so he was gonna yeah. be like fuck it i'm out of here i'm taking on that spaceship and getting the fuck out of here before the zenith threat destroys us and then he turns back around and says ah maybe i'll stay for a while yeah it was a nice softening of his character i think in mm-hmm. the right way finally of being like wait oh, and it's a softening in a minor way a minor way because he, i think he's still very clear he's like i could leave any fucking time like yeah. <laughs> If things go to hell, I'm out. Like, I'm just gone. But maybe it's worth sticking around these people. They might know there might be a chance to actually, like, save us. Which is well, a and- change to his character. Like, but it's also a thing of... It's a change, but not really. Because what it's clear that he's always been about is saving knowledge. Right. Wanting to, like... Feeling that, like, man, to preserve... To preserve life, you're going to have to make hard decisions. And he's willing to just, like, I think he even mentions it, do, like, the Zero Dawn program. And Elizabeth originally did of being like, all life is going to die. But how do we start it again? Yeah. Um, Well, that was an interesting part of the ending where he's basically like, I'm getting on here. Elizabeth would come with me. Bring Gaia. Let's just start life somewhere else. And for a second, I, as a character, you know, embodying that character was like, yes, that's that's right. That's what we should do. And then all the other companions come into the scene. And it's like, no, I can't do that. I can't leave them, Um, which is what she was going to do, obviously. Yeah. Um, I like the part where when they came around and they're kind of talking and then Aaron's like, where the fuck's that guy going? She's like very far away from here. And he kind of stops and looks at all of them being a group. And he had just been part of that group, which he hadn't yeah. done in the last two games, really. Um, and it just felt like felt natural for him to be like, nah, I kind of want this a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Starting to um, realize, like I said, soften a bit as yeah. a character. Like, ah, that was cool. Um, but yeah, I, I agree overall. Um, I worked and got the platinum yesterday. And that's where I discovered uh, Aaron's side quest. And companion stuff, which is never explicitly stated as like this is going to be Aaron's companion quest. But uh, so who start who starts it? By the way, it's not. It doesn't start from anybody. It's the rebel outposts. Oh, so you work through the rebel outposts to 
And that's actually a story in and of itself. As you start working from outpost to outpost as they go up in level, it starts stringing together a story. And it brings in the Osirum into it, and it brings Aaron into it, and then it actually culminates in you going into an outpost with Aaron. Oh, fuck. Like, that's so and doing cool. A, doing a whole thing with him. Like, but it's never, like, explicitly starts as, like, oh, this is this is Aaron's companion quest series. It just right. was, and it was cool. That's um, so cool. I didn't do a single outpost. Yeah. <laughs> I skipped them all. Uh, I mean, the only reason I did it, I just looked at the, I had five achievements that I hadn't finished after I beat the game, and I just went through the list and was like, okay, I have to beat. It's specifically beating a certain character in the outpost chain. It's the boss at the very end. Um, mm, okay. And I was like, okay, I guess I need to, I've done two outposts. I need to do the other, work through the other four. Let's go. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised in that. That's so um, cool. Wow. Okay. I was like, oh, good. They actually did give Aaron uh, his own his own thing. Um, because the interesting thing, now playing through the whole game, the first gameplay trailers they ever showed of this never actually happened in the game. Where Aaron is captured and you're saving him. Yeah, I never watched any of the trailers because I didn't care. <laughs> yeah. There was there was an early, the very first like gameplay trailer had you rescuing Aaron from Rebel Tanat in San Francisco. Oh. That scene, that never happened. None of that no. actually happened in the game. Um, yeah. So at some point, it, it was either part of the story at some point, or they, they... Honestly, it's been a couple years, so they probably just changed the story. Um, and it just wasn't working, and so they wanted to repace things. Right. Um, I, I will agree with you when you're talking about, like, endings are hard. It did feel a bit rushed at the very end. It totally did. It was like, um, hey, there's this other threat. It's fucking... I forget... Ah, fuck nemesis nemesis oh uh, that's convenient <laughs> okay and then it doesn't quite resolve in a way that's satisfying like oh Which, it's still coming yeah i mean that's the third then i'm pretty sure that's the third game um i was gonna ask is, you do you think that's the third game or do you think it's yeah. dlc no i think it's the third game i think okay. dlc is probably going to deal with you recapturing hephaestus again um mm -hmm. or something on or just working on preparing for this yeah the nemesis threat um because I do think the third game is basically, like any of these games, is now going to be get all the tribes together. Right. Like, it's going to take a huge force to do it. The only, the interesting thing about that, they talk about how quickly Nemesis destroyed the Zenith, and you're like, how do we stop that? But Nemesis is the, like, disturbed AI minds of the Zeniths. Right. Um so it knew every access code. It knew everything about the Zeniths base on Cirrus, that colony. And so it could easily wipe them in, out in hours. The Zeniths know nothing about Earth, really. Like yeah, they don't, not, not they don't like know, it is now. Yeah. yeah, they don't know how to access the Hephaestus systems. They don't know like exactly how to take it over. So I feel like Nemesis, that whole thing, is just going to be a big struggle. Like It's a big threat, but it, it's not just going to steamroll over the civilizations on Earth now. So I'll be curious what that game ends up being. Also in a way of like the scale of it does I'm like what what's the map for that game? Right. It can't, because, it can't be the Earth, right? I mean it can't just be the Earth. <laughs> I yeah. think. Right? It's like, okay, we gotta go to the moon now. <laughs> or some shit. Yeah, something but even like the scale, I'm like, oh, what region of the of Earth does this take place on? Do they do multiple maps? Um, big open world maps so that you can be on different continents at least a little bit. I mean, you're at least uh, going to where the Quen are. I, I would think, unless that's DLC. Um, actually, we should dig into that a little bit on the Quen. Um, yeah, because you had texted me the the CO. <laughs> oh my god, so fucking funny! Like, okay, like they just dug into some fucking ancient fucking artifacts data, and they're like, oh, a CEO. But they don't know what that fuck that means. So like, oh, the CEO. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, it was so funny. Um, oh, it was. It was. Uh, it, yes. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't get it immediately. They were just call him uh, CEO, and I was like, okay. But then it started all falling into place of being like, oh my god, these people have just have this data, and they're just like, <laughs> no corporate structure. That's like how everything was, and that's like who's the most important people are. And I'm like, oh my god. 
Yep. How wrong you you are, and how misinterpreted <laughs> the data. Well, did. like definitely wrong on that front, and also like Ted Farrow was the best among them. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yes, and then oh. Elizabeth was just like uh, an, an assistant. assistant. <laughs> well, she was at one point, but they couldn't right. access the data because their focuses weren't in, weren't up right to there. One point oh's. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't they couldn't access the data that actually had her. Uh, breaking off doing her own thing and then uh basically well pharaoh to killing everything um i still think that pharaoh part of the storyline was like the best like when i was when i I was thinking earlier before the podcast about like you know endings are hard and stephen king has always said that like but you know the story is great you're going in this like you got to wrap it up somehow and it's never satisfying or it's not always satisfying but i thought the ted pharaoh ending like that was a that was an ending of that story really yes yes and i thought it was perfect like run down there, hear the monster screams like "fuck this," <laughs> and yeah. then starts fucking uh, trying to melt everything with lava. Yeah, oh god, that was that was a great use of not showing. I love it. It was off, it was off so screen, good. just being like you got some like hologram kind of stuff of being like, oh, there's like this organic blob thing on the the energy reactor, and what you learned so far about like the whatever treatments Pharaoh wanted to live forever, immortality, were not working so well. Um, yeah, there, was no, a, there was a nice little horror twist there. And then uh, the uh, the CEO <laughs> went off screen, looked at him, and then, like, stumbled back out and was like, just kill it. Just, it's like... Uh, but it's also nice to know that uh, Ted Pharaoh and the story did not get everything he wanted. Actually just became a true monster. In yeah. all ways, um, right. that was a nice bow tie on the on the whole thing. Um, I enjoyed but, that. Yeah, and um, there were so many like um, I don't know, like end points while the story still propelled forward, like the Regala thing. Um, uh-huh. You know, like you defeat her, and then you can choose to let her live or die or kill her. Basically, what'd you um, do? I I kept her alive. So did I. Damn, I was yeah. hoping that you. So I was like, hoping you did the other thing. No. <laughs> Because there's that scene later where you're running away from the specters and then they encircle Regala and she tells you to go. I'm like, what happens if you what happens if she's not here? Who dies here? Does anything happen here? Yeah, um, I don't know. That's what I would want to know if it's that or does. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to find out. Is it? I just felt like Aloy would probably keep her alive because she didn't. She cared more about the end game than about whatever shit. Yeah, the pers- those personal vendettas yeah. and stuff. And then right. she would also be in the way of being like. Regal has just been used by silence and manipulated. Yes, so yeah. whatever, like fine. You you want to you want to have these grand battles and be great. Yeah, we got one for you. Just do it. Um, yep. This is the glorious death I was promised. Yes, that's right. Bye, <laughs> bye. Cool. Um, God, the the combat never got old in this game. It was no. good from start to finish. I love I love the fact that you can target different parts of the body and like all the different weapons like it finally all clicked man this i don't know yeah they're wildly different from the first one it seems like it's the same but man it clicked better for me yeah i think it's i mean it's not radically changed from the first one all it's like the same the same type of stuff going on but i think it just been tuned way better it felt even for me from from memory of the of uh zero dawn to this it just like the combat just felt snappier and always like being able to target stuff was yep. easier um it would break off a little bit like easier like there was just i wouldn't say easier but it would just felt way more impactful like being able to hit parts and break stuff off um so i I think they just tightened it all up more than anything um i think the accessibility options also kind of tie it together because you could make the wheel weapon wheel go a lot slower yeah um i think that was helpful yeah no that that helped a ton too i think that was that was really cool trying to think of other stuff Go well, ahead. the Tilda the Tilda storyline, um, where she like breaks off from the Zeniths and kind of like saves yeah. Aloy and company, and then like is on your side, and you feel like she's part of the team. She comes to the base, and then she <laughs> fucking. I never felt she was part of the team. I always yeah. felt like something was wrong there. Like, like, okay, you're clearly not wanting the Zeniths to whatever the. You're not gonna go along with whatever the Zeniths are wanting to do. Like, you're not sold on these those people but it always like long before she had played her hand on what her 
actual actual objective is. I was I'm like, it just felt like there's something else that she wants here. Um, which the reveal is that she just wants to have Aloy come with her. Um, and them take the shuttle and go away because she feels regret that Elizabeth died and she didn't exactly. yep. wasn't able to save Elizabeth and take her off world with the Zenith. So she's going to kidnap Aloy. She's like, she's just like, I don't care what you want. I, I mean, I, it makes sense for a person that's lived a thousand years at this point mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. like, you'll forgive me in a few centuries. It's fine. Like yep. understanding that like all of this is fleeting. Even your anger doesn't matter. Like, right. Fine. Um, but it's, it, which honestly feeds back into where I actually do like the themes around the Zenith feeling like, well, they've lived so long and survived so much that they have lost that part of their humanity. They feel entitled to all of this. Um, cause why not? Like if you can live forever, a little, a little upset here and there doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, exactly. Be. You'll get over the anger. So that's like, yeah, the entire their entire perspective on all of them, their perspective on life, what it means, what what matters, has just been so completely warped by that level of immortality, um, which I was okay with. Um, it made but, for some interesting, interesting story beats. Yeah, it definitely. I, I liked, you know, I liked that that big threat wasn't in there too much. It was always kind of in the background, kind of like a silence. Like he was in the background for most of the game, creating yeah. the fucking antidote to their shield, basically. And it almost feels like a Deus Ex Machina, but it was. I think it was told well enough that it, yeah, made sense. Um, and it didn't feel cheap. Um, but man, they got wiped the fuck out immediately. <laughs> yeah, they really Shields did. Down. Well, that's the thing. They become so. Uh accepting of those shields of yeah. like oh no one can hurt us we have this technology well you're just human very long-lived human but if without your technology like that you're just human and you can die just like anybody else with no nothing else going on um random side thing so i beat the game watched the credits the the voice cast came up per- performance mm-hmm. cast um going through and they got to gerard on there, and I was like, and it was the name next to it was Daniel Donahue, which for most people probably means nothing. Yeah, um, don't know. um, but I'm like, that's and it's spelled D O N O H U E, uh, Donahue. Uh-huh. And I was like, wait, that can't be. So we're gonna, we're gonna go back to my freshman year of college, and I go to Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Uh-huh. And I see Henry V. Henry V is played by Dan Donahue. Huh. Later, a couple months later, I go to Seattle Rep. That would have been nine... Actually, I probably went to Seattle Rep first, actually. Probably 2000, spring of 2000, went to Seattle Rep, and I saw Midsummer Night's Dream. Dan Donahue played Puck. And then I saw him as Henry V um, about six months later in the next... Oregon Shakespeare Festival season. Uh, amazing Henry V. Like, God, he killed it. He was great as Puck, too. And I was like, so I saw the name in Horizon. I was like, no. And it's weird that I just know a random <laughs> Shakespeare actor. But I had seen him in a few things. And I and the other time I had seen him was in 2010. I saw him perform Hamlet at Oregon Shakespeare Festival. He was Hamlet. Um, again, he killed it. He was a. I just remember his performance because I'm like, I've seen this dude at playing Shakespeare multiple times. Um, and I do remember that first connection might always sticks in my brain is because I saw him as Puck at Midsummer, And when I went down and saw Henry V, I didn't know any of the actors necessarily. I hadn't remembered. It stuck in my mind because whenever Henry V came out and it was the same actor as Puck. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I've seen that guy before, but I saw him in Seattle. Like, and I got my playbills. And I was, when I got back home and I was like, my dorm, and I was like, holy shit, it's the same dude. Um, <laughs> wow. And then, yeah, I saw him in Hamlet, and that was cool. But it's the same dude here. It's the same guy. Well, that's a cool Gerard, role. And he's Shriv in Battlefront 2. Huh, um, I don't know that character. Um, a blue has he, done, has he done a bunch of voice acting in video games? Yeah, mocap. Oh, okay. Like, so probably post, like, 2010... His career's kind of taken off in like mocap and performance and voice stuff, and he's been on wow. TV a couple times and different shows and like 
I'm like, but I'm like, holy shit. Why did I even know? Like, why does that name pop out? Because, like, I thought you were going to say Carrie Ann Moss playing Tilda. (laughs) Oh, I knew that. I heard the voice immediately. And I was like, oh, "Oh, yeah, I know that's I know that's Carrie Ann Moss. Um, No, it's just Gerard. I was like, huh, it's it's the dude I've seen play some just incredible Shakespeare. Oh, I wish he had a bigger role now then (laughs) in this game. Yeah, uh, it definitely seems like uh, he doesn't have he's had a couple side casts as um, mocap type stuff and. But it is a thing that he does now. So, um, but that that's my random, random aside, weird name connection thing of being like, what the fuck? Like, and that was at like one thirty at night when I saw the credits and I was like, well, I'm right. up till two because I'm scouring the internet being like, is this <laughs> the same dude? Like, Are you going to know Wikipedia rabbit hole? I kind of did. It was harder than that. Like beyond, I, there's a site called Behind the Voice Actors and they had him there and they had a picture and i was like i'm pretty sure that's the guy pretty sure yeah um, when you what is it a couple nights ago when i was like oh i think i'm gonna stay up and i didn't stay up i went to sleep uh which was awesome um but then you texted and said i did exactly this and i saw it was 120 or whatever i was like oh shit it's gonna take me a lot longer to finish this game than i thought <laughs> yes the the end is that's the thing i think like the very end is feels a little quick like they needed quick, a, they yeah. needed more time of okay nemesis is the next thing then it drops you back at then it's credits yeah then it's credits and it drops you back at base like yep. they probably needed a little bit more time from beating uh uh whatever the thing Spectre is Spectre Prime. Spectre Spectre Prime, Prime and yeah. Tilda and all that um yeah. and having more character moments there before yeah. the final final credits rolled like I agree I a few more minutes to... not like a huge amount but something yep. going back to the base and talking to each person at least once yeah, um, because then they're off to go like recruit other people, and it's like, yeah. uh, but we're all got what the fuck? Like we've been talking to these people all game, and then it just like is gone. And I, I kind yeah. of appreciate it because I was like ready f- for the end, but it felt too quick. Yeah, um, I didn't want another hour of dialogue, but uh, you know, a little, two, five minutes would have been good. Yeah. Um, well, how did you? How was that Spectre Prime fight for you? Fine. Yeah. None of the fights towards the end were terribly hard. Um, I was playing on normal difficulty, no changes, and I, I don't know. I have uh, legendary weapons in like every slot. No, oh, full, not fully upgraded, but I got. I mean, if you do all the a lot of the side content, that's where you get legendary weapons. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So I had all orange weapons that did a shit ton of damage, nice. <laughs> and so I was just. Uh, pelting Spectre Prime with all sorts of explosives and <laughs> uh, the the arrows that um, the sonic burst arrows that blow the off ones. arm. Yeah, uh, are... yeah those oh. mm-hmm. drill javelins, explosive javelins, explosive little balls, things that I would throw. And then like my normal hunter arrows were just I would had the triple shot ability mm-hmm. on so I'd just triple up those arrows and those were do- I think each arrow was doing like 150 points of damage. So, oh dang, your like, fight was better than mine. <laughs> yeah, I was probably like, I had gotten towards the end of the game, like fighting Thunder Jaws, any of these uh, slaughter spines, any of these like late game machines. It became started becoming not really that big of a deal. Like I was like, "Yep, I'm taking you on. Whatever, I'll have yeah. this fight done quickly." Yeah, I feel like for me, it was, most of it was fine. Like, um, I wasn't dying or whatever. It felt really good. I have all purple weapons. I don't have any legendaries. Um, and the Spectre Prime, I died like twice and then got her on the third time. And I basically just pelted her with um, uh, the drill, ammo, the uh, poison, and then um, uh, plasma. Yeah, um, a lot of plasma. But uh, the first few times I died is because I kept putting acid traps down because that was sensitive to acid and plasma. But then she would throw fire and just burn everything up. Yeah, so it would just blow up in my face, and I was like, "Wait, what just happened?" <laughs> it took me two times to realize what was happening. I stopped putting traps down and just started staying. Just I just stayed at a distance and just kept pelting her, and it was trivial. Yeah. I, my favorite one was the um, bolt blaster, using bolt blaster on her and just shoot. Bolt blaster is good. It's yeah. very good. Very bolt, fucking good. Bolt blaster with plasma. That was yep. a good one. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so, got her on the third time. And the Spectre's leading up there was, was trivial. 
wasn't that bad at all. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I felt like by that point in the game where I was, I just, I was pretty well powered up, Um, so I didn't. Yeah. How many hours did you finish with? Uh, 80? Just dang, over 80? Dang, dang! Mine was so 48. So I, th- I, think, I think I platinumed it, just over 80. Okay. That's the final. Yeah. Yeah, Um, I had done a lot of side stuff. And the thing is, the platinum doesn't require you to complete, like, fully complete all the side stuff. There's, like, a few things. It's like, do all the melee, melee ring, um, right. melee pits. pits. Yeah. Do do and win two races. Um, uh-huh. I think I think there's more than two in the game. You just have to do two, but be coming first. To do all the... I think it's doing the companion stuff matters. Three those. of them. Only three of them get trophies. Yeah. It was do all the outposts. I guess technically that's a fourth a fourth yeah. one, because it is right. Aaron's that's quest true. there. Um, yeah. I can't remember. Like, I just started getting through them pretty quickly. Cause I'm, so. I'm at 58% right now, so I've got probably yeah. 14 more trophies or so. I know what they are. I've seen the. You have to list. do all the cauldrons. Yeah, that was one I cleaned up on. Cleaned up yesterday. I had like two qual- cauldrons I hadn't done. Um, mm-hmm. Do all the tall necks. Like you get all that. You would have gotten that one through the end of the. Oh, technically no, you don't have one. to. You don't have one. to do one because yeah, that one. The last, the one that I hadn't done was the one you couldn't do until you could fly. Um, right. Yeah, and oh one... my god, you can fly. Holy shit, that <laughs> was so, so cool. good. Like, you can just fly on top of the tall deck. I assume, I mean, I in San Francisco, I never went to the Golden Gate. I assume you can fly to it. Yeah, I did. No I flew way. around yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. There's can no, you I land on it? Uh, you could. I didn't see anything of yeah. worth to doing That's it. That's what I was wondering. Like, yeah. I was trying to see if there was anything out on it. It didn't seem like it. Um, I could be wrong, though. I'd made hard enough. But, uh, yeah, I just flew around. There was... um. There are a couple side quest errands that you can't do until you have flying. Uh, yeah, like the Valley of the Fallen or whatever. And then the first to fly side quest. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple in there. I did the No, right. I did the Valley of the Fallen without flying. Really? Cuz it yeah, said that can... it was locked until you finished Wings of the 10. Maybe you don't need to fly, but um Uh no, cuz I did it before it it was I don't know. I did it before I started Gemini. Oh, okay. Hmm. Like, I did a bunch of cleanup before starting Gemini. I had very little to do after Gemini. I went right from Gemini into Wings of the Ten. Yeah. And finished Wings of the Ten. And there was a few more errands to do. Well, wait, I know I just finished the game. I did all the other stuff once I had completed the game. Because most things are locked after Wings of the Ten. Yeah, um, exactly. It's like, do you want you want to be locked in? Like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I figured I was going to get powered up and then do a bunch of side stuff after the game, after I rolled credits. Um, you know, which it made the the boss fight fun because it was just I was at the right level. I was level 35 and the weapons were purple and I seriously used my last bullet. I didn't have okay. any more I didn't have any more resources to make any more plasma. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> all right, well, or acid, like it was all gone. I was like I got hunter arrows and I got traps, which aren't going to work, and I've got my last bolt blaster. With all right then. And it fucking went down to my like probably had like five bullets left, and she went down. I was like, all right, this felt it felt fucking great. Um, so I was very 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 happy with nice. just how the whole game went combat wise. Felt good. So I just yeah, I just felt like the ending was rushed. Like oh yeah, the zeniths are coming. Uh-huh, okay, we'll figure it out. Like it didn't feel satisfying. It didn't feel like we get to like relax and celebrate. It's like okay, we beat that character. We beat the the zenith threat, and now we're fucking dead. <laughs> You know, yeah, this shit's coming, but I guess that's they were definitely more a thing. Like, I was curious. The ending didn't put a time frame, though. That's what I was wanting. I was like, "How long do you guys got before Nemesis is here?" Yeah, like, does do you know? Is it just gonna happen, or do you have like six months? Do you have years before Nemesis? Like, how far behind the Zenus was Nemesis? Well, because they show, you know, at the end, um, Silence is zooming on the the solar map. And it's like, okay, I see where it is, like, distance-wise, but I don't see how fast it's moving. So I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you just don't get that nice time frame of being like, and I guess, I think I would have liked them to have that um, at the end of this. But I'm sure you're going to get that at the start of the next next game of being like a certain amount of time skip is going to happen. And you'll know, like, they'll say, (laughs) they'll say, like, Grandma Aloy. Yeah, I don't think that far, but I bet there will be like, it's been six months since we've learned about this threat. Um, yeah. Well, there's got to be thing. some sort of time frame for them to like 
gather all the people and you know share all the information and then bring it all back. Yeah. Um, um, God, good game. Good characters. It um, was a good game. It was good characters. And I'm to, to transition to Elden Ring. Sad that it came out again a week and a half before a <laughs> giant open world game <laughs> that uh, has basically been uh, sucking out all the oxygen in the room. Really? Yeah, because people will stop talking about Horizon or talk about Horizon in comparison to like the different way to do an open world. And it's like, you know what? I I get that. But some people enjoy both, first of all, but also might enjoy more a a game where you can open a quest log and be like, I want to knock out those three quests. Like it's just a menu for me to decide what to do. Yes. So I don't know. It sucks for Gorilla, but it's not going to hurt their sales. The game is fucking fantastic. So, yeah, I don't think it is in the end. Um I'll be curious, and whenever Sony does their next uh, <coughs> financial call or whatever to talk about what yeah. the sales were and everything, but I feel like it's done done particularly well. Well, in March, a, sorry, good being a PS PlayStation exclusive kind of thing. So yeah, February. I mean, Elden Ring was on sale for like a fucking two days or whatever, and it was the top selling game of the month, um, except for on PlayStation where it was Horizon. Um, yeah, which is obviously, of course, but I think. I don't know. I just feel like they must think they're cursed, but they're still putting out like amazing games that are well received yes. and people are buying and playing. Um, I find it remarkable, and I shouldn't be surprised about this anymore. But I started Horizon before you. You, in the time that took me to beat Horizon, beat Horizon and Elden Ring, putting eighty hours into each one. Yep. <laughs> you played one hundred and sixty hours of two games when I played forty-eight hours of one game. I play a lot um, of games. I will yeah. say, like, you must. I go mean, to sleep you like you are. You're making music and everything. No, my kids go to go to bed, get in bed around eight, and then I usually play from eight till one in the morning most nights. Yeah, that's, um, that's good. That's good time for him. And then I definitely get time, more time on the weekends to play. Just yeah, just the age of my kids is very different. Yes, like sure. yeah. I engage with my kids and we do some stuff on the weekends here and there, but I'm not engaged with my kids. For the entire Every time that we're, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't want that either. <laughs> like, um, yeah, that's not quite my, my no, experience. No, no, as, as, yeah. as they get older and that, that just happens. Like, yeah, exactly. they have their own interests. They want to do their own things as well. And I want to give them space to do that as that too. Like, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Figure out, figure out your own hobbies, what exci- interests you and excites you. And, We'll do, I mean, my we'll daughter do. would love to watch this game with me. Not happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my kids she... aren't watching this game either. Like, yeah. I'll play some games from, but this game. Oh, my son, my son, nice. my son, I could probably do, but my daughter is probably still a bit young. Um, even yeah. with blood turned off. Like the thing is, if I'm just fighting machines, machines, I yeah. wouldn't care. I'm like, yeah, sure, exactly. you can watch yeah. it, but I'm like, mm, mm, I gotta kill people. people sometimes. Yeah. Um. That's how I felt too when I was showing my daughter. I just drove right. I drove around. Fuck. Walked around the the world, and she was just like, "Wow, this looks amazing! Like those robots are cool. Like you know, like the battling against the robots is nothing. It's similar to Canterbury of Spirits battling. Like it's yeah. more intricate or whatever. But you're just bat- you know, it's, it's it's not a big deal. But um, T T games we're not doing. E10 yeah. is as high as we go. So yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Um, yeah, but eventually one day she'll we'll, we'll be playing RPGs together. I'm sure. That, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um. But yeah, so I'm still I'm 48 hours is a fucking ton. Like I haven't put 48 hours into a game in a while, you know, at least a year and a half. The beginning of the pandemic, I definitely did. But then obviously music took over. Uh, but it felt really good. Like I'm at a point where it's just like I needed like the power fantasy and I felt powerful playing uh, this game and it felt really cool. Yes. Um, but I am after the podcast, I'm starting Elden Ring um, <laughs> because that's how I roll. I just move on. I have to move when I finish a book. I have to start the next book like okay. the same day. Um, so I'm going to start. What am I doing? Am I doing a samurai? Is that a thing? Am I doing a confessor? What am I doing? Well, how am I starting? Um, oh, geez, I don't, I don't know for you. Um, yeah, because I don't, I, you know, I don't want too much. You know, I want to go in blind or whatever. But just knowing me, what do you think would give me the best shot at playing longer than five hours of this game? <laughs> well, honestly, I, I don't think samurai is a bad choice because you okay. get the. Yeah. Uh, you get a pretty strong opening weapon. You get a longbow to start, so you can pull stuff with range. You do have to learn melee with it, yeah. though. Like, mm-hmm. that's just the thing. It's like, you have to start getting used to the melee of the game and understand Souls-type melee combat. Um, 
and you'll panic roll and die plenty of times um <laughs> because of jesus christ um yeah i think samurai is decent um and then if not that astrologer confessor are mm-hmm. both good but astrologer if you're planning to go um you get some really good spells very early with astrologer and confessor takes a while to like build up to be that okay. like paladin type thing um mm. but magic is really good i'll give it that um yeah glintstone pebble will be your bread and butter and if you have enough uh i think it's intelligence you'll be doing a lot of damage with it so um but it's a different type of management in the game it's still not safe per se like safer yes but some enemies will still completely fuck you um because that's the game right um Every class, every type of playstyle is weak to something, so you'll yep. you'll hit walls. But I, I think that's probably it. Um, so it just depends on how much magic you want to do early. Like, with a samurai, you're not doing magic at all early. Right. right. I respect at, like, level 60. So I was mixed. I was doing... I got a, I got a specific very powerful weapon, um, and I respect... I needed to respect in some intelligence to use it, so katana that requires intelligence as well as pretty high decks but that split my focus of being like well i guess i'm a spellcaster samurai now as well um because i have i have high intelligence so these intelligence based spells do a lot of damage so i can use those um but that was like i want to say 30 ish hours into the game before i did that switch yeah um but that, that is something though there is respecking in the game eventually I would say it's not early, but it's, I've thought about how to say this. It's in the first third of the game, towards the end of the first third of the game. So don't worry about like burying my points. I can redo it if I need to. You can just hopefully you don't screw yourself too much because you still have to beat a boss to do it. So, um, but by the time you do that, you should be capable of beating, beating the boss. Um, I beat a couple bosses in, um, demon souls with a melee character. So, yeah, Uh, I think you'll, I can, I think you'd be fine. Um, yeah, I, th- I think I'll try Samurai first. Yeah, I think the big thing from my learnings in playing Elden Ring was you just don't want to fight multiple things at the same time if you can. Yeah, like right. as soon as you start even little peon guys, if you start getting two or three on you, they can just stun lock you, basically flinch lock you from getting hit. Um, yeah, which is is death. So. I think they give you a lot of once you get out of the the opening area that 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 first church get your view. Um, don't fight the stupid knight on horseback. That's <laughs> that that that's bait. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Um, avoid that. Continue around. Like it gives you some basic guidance on where to go. Like you'll see on the map, there'll be little, little I don't know lighty arrow things that kind of point you in a direction you should go from one point to another. Um, oh, from the statues or whatever? The... Uh, yeah, the sites of grace. You'll see yeah. them. Okay. Uh, not the statues. The statues oh, okay. are like, hey, there's a there's a hidden uh, tunnel down here or someplace. Like, mm-hmm. pure side content type stuff. Um, that they'll lead you to. No, like, when you look at open your map, some sites of grace will have, like, a little... Um, yellow line that comes off them in a direction kind of pointing you like if you're at the side of grace and if you go that direction that leads you to the next thing you should be doing um so there is the endeavor says that but there's like subtle guidance to if you look at the map on where to go and that will lead but if you follow it from the start it will lead you to the where our friend Kardik was playing like the the Mm -hmm. camp of just soldiers and it's a great place to just kind of learn combat because you can, yeah. it's pretty easy to pull one one by one and try different things and backstabbing and just kind of learn strategy there and earn a good chunk of runes so that you there's two gray sites, one to the north, one to the south, really close. So you can just rest, level up, do it a couple times just to get used to everything. It was a good... Like you bank runes when you do that, basically? Yep. Yeah. Uh, cool. you do, there's no banking of runes. Oh, okay. You, you always just... just have the runes on you, but... You can clear the camp, get used to it, clear the camp, get a bunch of runes, rest at the gray site, and level up. And okay. Sp- spin them to level up. Um, Got it. Got it. Th- there's no banking of anything. Darn Of, of runes. <laughs> so you, like, run like, back to... Yeah, okay. Nope. Nope. You better not. If you die, you lose your runes. 
got to go pick but them up again. But you go pick them back up. Yeah. Unless you die again, and then they're just gone. Right, yeah, that makes sense. That's the formula. Yeah, they didn't They didn't break that formula. Um, yeah. I kind of wish they had on a little ways. Um, not, not in that way, but Sekiro had a thing where you could... Uh, you could theoretically bank them. Um, you paid a certain amount of them to save them. Mm, interesting. Um, okay. You kind of had like a coin bag because Sekiro didn't have leveling up in the same way, but it, you had a coin bag where you could basically take your coins that you want to spend on buying things and put them in a <coughs> coin bag so when you die, you don't lose them. Um, but it costs money for a coin bag. Um, I really kind of wish they had done something in this game where you could say like fine i will sacrifice 20 percent of these runes mm-hmm. but they are now stored in an item and i don't lose it um right. i think that would be a nice uh, a nice change to the game because there's plenty of times especially when i was getting higher level when i needed like 80k runes to level and i had like 65 and i was like well i'm just gonna go grind now to get to 80 so that i don't lose them <laughs> Right, like playing like lower level enemies. Yes. That you don't, yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's just so that I can get to eighty, spin them all, so I'm at less than a thousand runes or something like that. Yeah, where I'm exactly. like, I don't care if I lose these now. I'm let me go try the new thing because I know I'll die. Right. Um, meta gaming a little bit. It is meta gaming a bit, but it's definitely a thing where I'm like, ah, this could have been better if you just said, eh, you can. There have been plenty of times where I would have sacrificed a portion of those runes to just save a chunk like right. a big chunk of it and just been like, fine, I go to zero runes, but I save a bunch of these, like of that 80, if I was at 65 and if I saved like 50 away, that's fine. Like still feels like I've made progress and can continue on. So that would be one critique that I hope that eventually they, they find a better solution for. Um, I guess they wouldn't change the system in this game, but maybe think about it for the next game. Yeah. They have a couple things in here. They try to do like, there's a item you can buy. That's like, if you die, will it will use that item instead of you dropping runes. Oh, but, interesting. But you have to preemptively like have it on you, and if you ha- it, each one goes away. <laughs> so you right. stockpile them, and if you run out, like it's kind of a step in the right direction, but I think there's a better way to, do, to handle it um, in the end. But uh, no, my, my back to advice would just be, yeah, I would say try Samurai, play through that first area a couple times, just see how you feel. And the other thing is, if you really just don't like the feel of Samurai, no reason at that point you couldn't just start a new character is right. Haven't really the other class. You're, yeah, exactly. You're you're not that far into the game. You're probably yeah an hour into the game, maybe hour and a half tops. Um, right. Better to switch then than stick with it. Ex- like exactly. It. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping to get that kind of whiff of adventure that I got from Breath of the Wild um, more than anything else. So I guess we'll see if it if it takes me. Otherwise, I'll jump back to Horizon and start mopping up yeah <laughs> trophies and such. I just feel like after I I knew I was ready to roll credits, and I know that after I roll credits, I need to walk away for a little bit. Um, so I played uh this week played uh the new Mario Kart tracks. Nice. By the way, uh, they've been really cool. It's nice to have new tracks, and the whole family's excited, and it's been fun. Um, and then my daughter's old enough. Uh, we tried it like six months ago and it didn't hit, but this time it really has hit. Uh, we're playing Mario Party, um, not okay. the new one, but the Mario Party Ten or whatever that was, or Super Mario Party that was not fantastic. But she doesn't know that. <laughs> um, she really likes it. We have a lot of fun playing. We played probably ten times now. Um, and that fucking Daisy man, <laughs> she uh, <laughs> she fucking like got like fought four stars in the span of like three minutes really um okay and it was just like wow that's impressive um and now she's she has been having a lot of fun and it's been it's cool you know she loves board games she play board games and it's like a she loves mario and it's a mario board game and she's like this is fucking heaven <laughs> where has this been my whole life um nice. so that's that's all we've been playing this week is you know me horizon and then those two games with my daughter yeah did i play anything else i played uh terraria with my son oh nice um because he he has been he saw some a YouTuber he watched play play it, and he's like, "That looks neat." And so he two weeks ago, um, it was on sale for ten bucks on PlayStation. So he gave me ten dollars and was like, "Can I have it?" I'm like, "Okay." And so now we do on the weekends at least do like an hour of playing together on that stuff. So nice. 
so yeah, uh, I played some with him. It's it is uh, fun to see him progress through into a more complicated, like Minecraft ish type game. It might be two D, right. but it is a far more complicated game than Minecraft when it comes to yep. like its crafting and uh, depth of systems and equipment and gear and the whole thing. It's just huge, but he is like all in on it and having a blast. So it's fun to see that. Like, okay, you're, you're playing pretty complex games now. So that is cool. Like a lot more systems going on than just, yeah. Yep. Minecraft where you're mining and building up and whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I that's guess adventure cool. mode had more stuff, but it does. Really. You don't have it has, equipment, do you? Yeah. You have equipment in Minecraft. Mm-hmm. You have armor, different armors and stuff like there's, there's quite an end game to Minecraft, but, I would still say it's pretty simple overall. Um, yeah. Easy to, to, to progress through and understand. Um, Terraria is just a lot more. Um, so, yeah, that's been fun fun to watch. Um, I feel like he would probably is getting close to wanting to play something like Horizon. And even then, he, I bet he's asked, like, it's it's just a thing of like, okay, do we want you shooting people in the head with arrows? Um at least it's like a step removed from like guns, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I've you know I have a very very strong aversion to guns and games, but arrows are you know we Kano was arrows. It was E10. Yeah. It was like yeah, he's played, not people though. It's, so. He's played some Fortnite at friends, but he always it's like the gun stuff. He's like meh, kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, um, good. Keep it so way. he's not even that. He's not that infatuated with the the FPSs and mm-hmm. and shooters like that. I think he's seen some Apex as well at a friend's house. He's like, it's fine, but there's not 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 a depth of not a level of complexity that he's experiencing in some of the other games he's playing. Yeah, he likes a lot of that crafting, that those crafting systems and like big exploration type stuff. I say so, exploration it seems to be the thing he likes. Yeah, yeah. So I I think Horizon is probably eventually up his his alley. I bet he cannot do Elden Ring for a while because that game has some just <laughs> disturbing shit in it. But I'm yeah. like, oh, he would probably love this game overall. Um. How or, how close is he to being a teen? I guess I forget. Pretty uh, close. He'll, he'll be twelve in June. Oh, okay. So, so he's eleven right now. Okay. So yeah, he'll I'll we'll have a year to be a teenager, really. Um, yeah. Right. And at, I mean, in general, like I feel like now there's a maturity level where I'm like, you could probably play anything I have here without without much issue. Um, the way he he talks about media and content and stuff and what's important to him, what's not. It's like, okay, there's there's a maturity level here where I'm less worried about it, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll wait for him to really push, like, oh, I really want to play this game, and then we can we can decide. I don't I don't need to push any of my games on him or anything. So Right, and you don't need to pro- preemptively erode the walls. You just wait till he starts pushing. Yeah, and he'll he'll and he'll be he's he will. He, his line, he knows and he will and there'll be a game that he's like I really want to play this game and I'll have to consider and look at it and talk with him about it and see how it goes so GTA 5 no we're not doing it no no <laughs> uh, I did pick that up on PSN though because it was 10 bucks I was like alright I'm just gonna <laughs> fucking do it um, I don't know when I'm gonna play it but yeah they, they got me with their GTA online for free and 10 dollars for the GTA 5 like I already downloaded the whole fucking thing to play online anyways which I'm not oh, playing anyways yeah, you fucking, it was like 90 gigs. Oh, I'm and sure. Then, and then when you de- you know pay the $10 to get GTA 5 single-player story mode, nothing downloaded besides, you know, it was obviously a license. <laughs> it was like a couple KBs. So. Nice. Yeah. Because <laughs> so I you would. needed, I mean, that makes sense, though. To even yeah, play the fine. online piece, you need all the assets that they had for the single totally. player. Totally, exactly. So. Yeah, makes total sense. Ugh. Um, <laughs> Same thing with Mario. Like I, I was so excited to play that night that launched. My wife and I were getting ready to play, and I couldn't play it. It's like, what the fuck? It says you need to get the expansion pass or buy it. And I was like, well, I have the expansion pass. Where the fuck is it? Um, then we just did something else. Um, but I just needed to download a license. I had to go to a different yeah. screen that I didn't know about. So that's fine. Whatever. We played later. Uh, good stuff. Good Mario Kart. Yeah. It was a good Mario week, really. So then with Sounds some Horizon like at night, Horizon at night. Yeah. And yeah. you know more during the day, like today and yesterday. I was yeah. like, sorry. I, I know we want to hang out, but I am going to play this during nap time. <laughs> yeah. So, You're like, yeah, I just want to finish this. Let me finish it. <laughs> yes, I do. But I'm just so compulsive that like, like when I finish something, she knows this. Like when I finish something, I have to start something immediately. Like I can't not wait to start something new. Well, there you go. So, 
So I'm going to do that right after the podcast. Um, speaking of, anything else for the good of the podcast? I don't think so. Um, no. No, I'm good. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening to us this week. Uh, the Horizon of Forbidden West spoiler cast. Definitely a fucking great game. You should play if you have PS5 or wait for three years when it comes to PC. Um, we Please rate us on your podcast service of choice. Tell a friend. And we will see you next week. Uh, talk to you later, folks. Later, everyone.